Hey everyone, welcome to Crest TV, your regular roundup of all things Crestron, UV, A AV and all that good stuff. And we've got another special. Modern Work Summit is coming up 23rd, 24th of May in Madrid. Have you booked yet? If you haven't, why not? Go to modernworksummit.com and register today. We've got one of our keynote speakers we have on the show today and we're going to be talking through the idea of modern work and in their case unworking let's try and find out what all that is about philip ross from unwork how are you doing good neil nice to meet you um un unworking uh, let's un let's unpack that uh i love yeah. to work but let's let's do some unworking tell the uh, audience a little bit about yourself and what unwork is all about Sure, of course. Well, look, I founded Unwork almost 25 years ago, and we, we wanted to kind of be a bit kind of unconventional, um, challenge the future of work and workplace. And the idea of the brand Unwork and the new book Unworking is about unbundling our assumptions, you know, unlearning our habits, unraveling what we do, and just starting again, taking a kind of a fresh lens, uh, a blank sheet, and, and really reimagining work for this new era we're in. It is interesting. 25 years. So clearly there's been a bit of a the graph is like this and then suddenly, you know, it went like that uh, two or three years ago. What What's changed from the sort of the 20 years to then the last five years? What's the dynamic? What what have you, I mean, what was it like? What is it like before <laughs> before the world yeah, changed? Well, I mean, look, it's interesting that there were some leaders. I mean, they've always been companies that are ahead of the pack and they were innovating anyway before the pandemic. They had adopted mobility, they'd adopted shared space, and they'd adopted the cloud. And I think those ingredients were essential for people to respond to the lockdown and working remotely. Um, now everyone's done it, you know, the entire world has had to kind of experience working outside of the office building. And so by and large, we're having to reimagine and reinvent where and why work takes place. And the office itself will be something very different in the future, we think. All right. Okay. And and again, what was the sort of top three things that you're seeing that, that customers are, are finding now? You know, what's what are the, the challenges that they're they're having that you hear over and over again? Yeah. Well, look, the key thing is hybrid work. You know, what is it? How does it work? It's it, it's kind of it's kind of settling on about two to three days a week for okay. most people around the globe. So, you know, can you off, run an office for, for for a you know with the expense that that the overhead brings with a three-day week, well, that's the big challenge. How do you spread that? How do you load balance? And when you come into the office, what are you going to do there? Are you going to just sit at a desk tapping away? Probably not. You want to be there to be with people. So it's driving a different purpose. It's more about collaboration. And with that comes the challenges around digital equity. You know, most meeting rooms are not set up for hybrid work where some are in the in, in the space and some are remote. So there are huge challenges to reimagine the office. We're seeing Desking dramatically reduced by organizations. Let's say Lego has moved it from 70% of the floor plate being desks to 30%. Wow. So now the majority of your building, you know, 70% is about what we call we space, you know, places to be together and not alone. Okay. Now you, you we were talking before I press record, you you just got back from Asia Pacific and Australia. What dynamics do you see that are different? You know, obviously we're sitting here in the UK, North America is a massive place and has different dynamics are you seeing global dynamics are you seeing differences in different regions of the world or is it kind of generally you know generally the same across all geographies of what's going on well it's it's very different it, it, it is it's driven by a range of things partly it's culture um partly it's living conditions uh the commute time and the commute cost um the essence and the vibe in the cbd um you know there are so many different variables if you go to san francisco the business district is ghastly. I mean, it's dead. It's dangerous. <laughs> there, there are all sorts of issues around. Don't go crime. to San Francisco, everybody. No, no, <laughs> right? so, um, and, and you've got that challenge. You know, Manhattan, Midtown Manhattan. People are not going back into offices, and wow. yeah, there, there's there's massive issues around what's next. Whereas in Asia, there's a bit more of a drive to go back. It's that's right. partly cultural. It's partly because people live in smaller accommodation, and they maybe haven't got the space that you and I have got to do this and there's a range of factors but australia is really interesting i mean it's probably the leading market we think for workplace innovation okay. we do a lot of work there and a lot of our clients have adopted what i call activity-based working which right. means that workplace is a series of spaces which are specialized by the task or the activity with the appropriate fixtures furniture design lighting acoustics aesthetic and technology and it's a very different approach now, it's interesting. I, we had Craig Durr on, one of our other uh, speakers at Modern Work, and I asked him the same question because, again, the topics uh, blend into each other. You talk about, obviously, the, the, the real estate and the, the occupancy of the real estate reducing. 
what are we going to, you said about, you know, these we spaces in offices, but what are we going to do? You know, you talk about Manhattan and San Francisco where these offices, people aren't going. What are we going to do with these these piece, these buildings? Are they going to go to museums? Are they going to go to pubs and bars? What What's your view on, on what we're going to do with these spaces when, when all yeah. these companies are moving out? Uh, great question. Yeah, look, I mean, it's a big problem because not only is it just the market and, and, and about real estate, it's our pensions, right? I mean, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big component yes. of what we'll tie up with, right? So <laughs> it's, a, it's, an, it's an issue for us all in society. It's not just for the uh, real estate professionals. But but look, I mean, you know, we're having to reinvent what the office is for. I mean, it will be smaller. We're seeing law firms taking 25% less space. We're seeing banks ask for 40% reductions in space. So they're going to spend more money on what's left. It'll be high quality space. And that's great for us all in technology. Mm. But we will have to reinvent the city. So there are two trends. One is we're seeing new buildings being more imaginative. We worked on 22 Bishopsgate here in the city of London. Mm. Uh, we've been developing with Stuart Lipton and AXA. And that's a remarkable building. It's been one of the most successful in the city. It's the tallest in the city. Um, it's about 1.3 million square feet. And there's about 10% of the entire building as amenity. Right. So there's incredible immunity for, 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 for tenants. And that's driving a different experience for people to have when they come to work, whether it's a great gym with BXR or in incredible food or amazing event spaces and so on. So we'll see buildings respond and not just be these pretty in, inept containers. <laughs> but I think we'll also see the city respond. You know, they'll have to work harder to bring people in to what's called earn the commute. Right, um, yeah. And I think companies themselves have to be intentional about the experience they want people to have. Okay, interesting. Now, let's not steal anything more of your presentation and session at the Modern Work Summit. Uh, for those watching, what, what's the title of your session? What's your presentation? Have we, have we just bought it all in the last uh, sort yeah. of five, ten minutes? <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, look, I'll do a shameless plug. That's the new book. Yes, it's again, the book, it's yes. Called on, it's called I'm Working, uh, obviously on Amazon. It's... The presentation is about the new book, which has just come out. It's, it's done really well. Um, I think it hits a nerve. And I, I think what we're finding is that there are a range of factors that are kind of converging to kind of create this almost perfect storm. So for those organizations that want to step back and really think hard about what they want, there are huge benefits, not just kind of ESG benefits and sustainability and carbon uh, uh, commitment benefits, talent attraction uh, benefits, diversity benefits, uh, digital benefits, um, data science. There's so much to play with wow. that is exciting and drives a better performance and better business. But I think there's a, a moment we can actually um, be innovative, be introspective, and of course, uh, practice on working. Fantastic. That moment will be in Madrid, 23rd and 24th of May. Uh, again, the book. So I, I, we talked again beforehand. I, I love doing video, great at doing content. I can press record and go. But writing something down is not my forte. You you put this book together. Is this your first book? It's not, actually. I've done a few. You've got a back catalogue. <laughs> yeah, this is, the, this is kind of the fourth in a series of books wow. on future of work, actually. So, yeah. And it's sold out already. I'm guessing that there's going to be restocking soon. You can go to Amazon. We'll put a link in the description for those who want to go and grab yeah. the book and have a look at that. Um, and maybe bring it to bring it to Madrid and get a signed uh, copy by yourself, maybe. Uh, that that would be Thanks. very cool. Uh, Philip, uh, where can people hook up with you? Uh, other than obviously on Amazon for the book, where's the best place to go and hook up with you? And obviously not in Madrid. Where can people go and find out about Unwork? Of course, um, unwork.com is our website. Um, obviously, we, we're based, we have people in London, APAC and North America, but I'm based in London. Um, I'm, I'm is my Bankside space. So we're, we're kind of right in the heart of Bankside, which is a great spot. Um, but yeah, look, really happy to kind of continue the dialogue and engage. Crestron's a great partner and we're doing some work through our academy as well uh, with Crestron that you'll all find out more about soon. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you ever so much for joining us on the show, Philip, and we'll see you uh, in Madrid. I'll be happy to uh, welcome you on stage at the Modern Work Summit. Thanks for that. Thanks, Neil. Look forward to it. And thank you all for joining us on this episode of Chris TV and a Modern Work Summit update with uh, Philip Ross from Unwork. He will be attending the Modern Work Summit and presenting on stage. Uh, you still have time, if you're watching this before the 23rd and 24th, you still have time to register. Go to modernworksummit.com. For more information on Crestron, go to crestron.com. And for more information on Unwork, go to unwork.com. That's all the websites. Ring the bell, hit the subscribe, do all that good YouTube stuff, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Crest TV.